Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Matthew Buckley, as Renee said, and my call sign is Wiz. And in today's brief, I'm going to introduce what uh, I do at Top Gun Options, who we are, how we're uh, doing year to date in our portfolios, uh, the methodology we use to invest and trade, a seven step trade plan. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about an acronym that we use, we are using this year. It's called To Fear 2016. And sounds like we really do need to fear 2016. Um, and I'm going to give us an actionable trade. It is going to be a hedge against a potential pop in volatility over the next month or so. This market is at record highs, uh, and it really shouldn't be, but it is. And we have to trade the market we have, not the market we want, okay? Uh, real quick, uh, as Renee said, Matthew Buckley, uh, you can call me Wiz going forward. Uh, I didn't, that wasn't born with that name. <laughs> my, my parents did love me. I earned that uh, flying the, uh, the Hornet for the Navy for uh, 15 years. Graduated from Top Gun, was a bad guy, adversary pilot, and also flew 44 combat sorties over uh, Iraq. As I was a young officer just just in uh, the Navy getting ready to go to flight school, I remember contacting USAA and because and, I heard about these things called mutual funds. This is like 1991 or 92. Uh, you know, uh, growing up, my father used to, used to ask my father about uh, in the Atlantic City, that's where I'm from, Atlantic City, New Jersey area. I used to point to the you know, pages in the paper. I'm like, Dad, what are, what's all this? What are all these numbers and stuff? And say, he's like, well, that's the stock market, son. And from there, it just kind of, my, my interest in finance grew. So, uh, the fork in the road. I was either going to go fly fighters for the Navy or go be a trader slash investor. Uh, and obviously, uh, based on my call sign, you guys know which uh, direction I took. Uh, don't miss a day of it. Sometimes uh, buddies of mine are multi, multi, multi millionaires. I, I have a couple buddies who are billionaires who took that immediate finance route. I wanted to serve my country. That's the way I was raised. And I wanted to give uh, give some back, but I always had that finance bug. When I first got in the Navy, uh, uh, and I was married, and, uh, I decided to buy two stocks. I remember calling USAA to this day. I still have the trade ticket, uh, and it's like a, it was like a two hundred fifty dollar commission. My God, we think commissions are high right now. Commissions aren't high, folks. But I, uh, my wife, I think personally, kept Ann Taylor in business, and also uh, I used the Amer my American Express to pay the damn bill. Well, guess what the first two stocks that I bought were, and then uh, it was off to the races after that. I found out what options were, and I never looked back at stocks ever again, and I've been trading options uh, ever since. Uh, as Renee said, I speak to Fortune 500 companies around the globe, around the United States. They also have to do with trading with everything. Everything I learned flying fighters, I apply to my options trading because, uh, you know, trading's a form of combat, folks, when you think about it. Somebody's going to win, and somebody's going to lose. And I'm pretty sure most of us on this webinar don't want to be on the losing side of that. But check this out. When I travel, I, I have a gig uh, in about a week in Houston with another uh, oil company that, that shall remain nameless. Um, but I have a view into the economy and into the markets that nobody else in this country does. Let me give you an example. This oil company I'm working with next week, I sent them a 25-page briefing document. They had to fill out. What's their strategy? Who are their competitors? Where do they see oil? Boom, 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 boom. I get the answer key. Why? So when I get up on stage and give an hour-long keynote, it's full of everything that they gave me, and people come up to me afterwards when I get off the stage and how long you've been working for uh, for us? Like I don't. Here's the deal for all the attorneys whose eyes are wide right now. I'm a fiduciary with these companies. I can't trade in these companies. I have a compliance department that looks at that. And nor would I do that anyway because it's illegal. But here's what a top and options trader gets. They, I get situational awareness as to what's going on in every industry that I work with. I know who's hiring, who's firing, who's acquiring, what the trends are. I talk to salespeople. I talk to the CEO. I talk to everybody. This is a great deal. for. Uh, I, I know before any analyst who's covering one of these companies knows what's going on. And I make long-term connections with these companies uh, as well. So uh, if you're getting your financial news from CNBC, what I call Comedy Central, you're, you're, you're about three hours too late. I'll tell you that right now. Got out of the Navy, did my consulting, and uh, I popped up on the radar of one of the largest volatility arbitrage firms in the United States, headquartered right there, these big, beautiful windows. This is the Chicago Board of Trade. That's Jackson and LaSalle. And uh, it was called Peak Six Investments. I was a managing director of strategy. We built a hedge fund. We built a retail brokerage called Options House. And I built a company called the Options News Network. 
we shot on the floor of the SIBO and the CBOT, and I gave you all a behind-the-scenes look at what was going on, unusual options activity or, or some good trades, and it was great. We had an absolute blast. Uh, CNBC actually, we actually tried to advertise on CNBC, uh, and they're like, no, you're a competitor. That was one of the best phone calls I ever got. Eventually, they took my quarter of a million dollars, and we didn't run TV commercials on. Uh, but because, I, as, as many of you know, uh, CNBC only plays pays lip service uh, to uh, uh, to options. John and Pete do a great job. Finally, my last job, most important job uh, to me, is a father of three beautiful kids down here in uh, Boca Raton and Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Now we're going to get airborne. It's going to be fast, furious. We're limited on time, and uh, and I don't want to uh, to miss anything. Uh, critical. If I do, you can come contact me here at TGO, and we'll figure uh, uh, we'll figure it out. Wiz, give him some of your politics. Love you, man, <laughs> Buck. Uh, we will most likely get into my politics here in a little bit when we talk about trading. Uh, it's funny because I, I I quote lose potential customers or current customers every once in a while during my politics. I, I really don't care. Uh, if I wasn't running TGO, I'd still be managing my own four portfolios and printing money, as you're about to see. If you don't understand that politics drives the market, for, look at the Brexit, look at Greece, look at, that, look at potential government shutdowns in, in the United States or debt ceiling fights. It's all politics. If I didn't trade my politics, I'd be broke, and I'm not. Here's the performance of one of our portfolios uh, year to date. Seven, if you'll allow me to round up, 80% return on risk. 80% return on risk year to date. 57.8 on another one. And then finally, 132% uh, uh, on another one, about uh, 25, 25.5. Those returns, if you look at the top and bottom funds, well, why would you look at the bottom funds? Look at the top funds of 2018. The top is 18.71%. Uh, That's actually crushing it for, uh, for a hedge fund. Our hedge fund did 12.2 uh, tw uh, last year, uh, which was great um, for us. But, 18, but compare that with our returns. Listen, you don't have to. Look at this. Here's 20, look at this down here. This is 2,800 hedge funds. Look at their performance for the past couple of years. Look at this. Not too bad. Double digit to a decimal point and then another decimal point. What I'm getting at, folks, is you don't have to pay some hedge fund manager who's got three houses in the Hamptons a 2 and 20 fee to get really great returns. As a matter of fact, hedge funds aren't designed to have super great returns. They're designed to make money, potentially, if the market goes up, down, or sideways. That's what we're going to do here at TGO, and I'm going to show you how we do it. We're crushing the top 20 hedge funds in the United States and, quote, unquote, the smart money which we can do. We're, we're options traders. We employ a lot of leverage, and we have the ability uh, to do that. <clears throat> so here we go. Pull out a piece of paper and start writing some uh, notes down, if you will, please, because uh, this is, this is going to mean a lot. Here's our methodology, SOT, Strategic Operational Tactical. I'm going to tell you right now, folks, you need nothing other than the seven inches of gray matter between your ears and a trading platform and what I'm going to teach you at TGO. Well, this guy's got some really good software here, or he's get, ditch it. It's a complete waste of money. I use I trade on Options House mainly because I help build it and obviously have an affinity for it. But the trading tools that we have on Options House are better than actually the tools we were using on the floor. <laughs> By the time we built Options House, uh, the, uh, the 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 guys running our uh, our company were like using Options House on the side to get trade ideas. So ditch this. Reverse Fibonacci with a twist crap and all sorts of other stuff out there. You need your brain. And even if you don't have that big of a brain, then you just need a half of a brain to be able to listen to me here at TGO. SOT, Strategic Operational Tactical. That's how you're going to trade going forward. What do I mean by that? Out of the however many traders we have uh, on this webinar today, many of you are very, very tactical. <clears throat> you, you know, you got up, you put on your bunny slippers, sipping on a cup of coffee, looked at uh, some guys saying that Netflix is a great buy after it sucked on earnings. Okay, well, he's got a nice suit on. Good looking hair, too. Kind of tan. All right, I'll listen to him. I'm going to go long Netflix today. And then, you know, this time next week, you're broke. You can't think that way, folks. You have to be what we call a strategic uh, trader, right? What you want to do, and I'm going to show you really quick, since I have to move fast, our, you have to have a strategic brief. You're going to be an admiral or a general, 
at Top Gun Options, and I'm going to be a lowly lieutenant, and I'm going to stand up in each one of my live trade briefs. Uh, did one this morning for about an hour and 45 minutes, and I'm going to give you a 15-minute strategic brief. What's going on around the globe economically? What's Mario Draghi uh, have to say? What's the uh, uh, peop, uh, the, the, the Chinese uh, bank have to say? How about uh, over with uh, Helicopter Ben with uh, Bank of Japan Governor Kuroda? Uh, you know, a, just a complete macroeconomic brief. What's going on with the Brexit? Anybody even remember that? We'll talk about that in a second, too. What a, what a waste and a, what a great trade. Uh, political. Just like Chuck said, hey, man, love your politics. We have to talk politics. Turkey, a coup that was more or less staged. He already had a list of nearly 20,000 guys he went arrested. When did you come up with that? In like the hour on the airplane you were flying back from Istanbul? It, it's a lie. He's supposed to be a, a, a member of NATO and an ally and blah, blah, blah. It's now become officially a Muslim country. And Ataturk, the founder of Turkey, is spinning in his grave because he entrusted the military to protect the Constitution. After we do a strategic brief, 15 minutes-ish, you're going to go, wow. And it's funny because a lot of people do say, Wiz, not only do I get all my financial news from you, I get all my regular news from you. And you should. I've still got a lot of buddies in the Pentagon, a lot of people up in D.C. that I know, uh, buddies that are overseas flying in, over Syria. You're going to get – you're going to know what's going on as much as I can. Or actually, I can tell you everything because Hillary Clinton obviously was allowed to do it. So uh, unless she's different than me, like more important or holier, I, I can tell you all the secrets that I know. Then we get operational. Then I'm going to talk about what's going on domestically. 15-minute brief. So now we're at 30 minutes. Here's what's going on with the futures. How about the Fed? Here's what's going on with earnings. What are the financials doing it? They're crushing it. Look at Goldman Sachs. Boom, 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 boom. Look at housing starts, building permits. What's the macroeconomic data here in the United States? How are, how are jobs looking? I'll give you a quick operational brief. So now, what do you feel like? You're getting a little situational awareness, don't you? All right, man, I know what's going on globally that's impacting the markets. I know what's going on operationally, what's impacting in the United States. And now I can do what? Trade. Now, do you understand why I say a lot of you are very, very tactical traders? Because you don't do what I just did above. I, have to, I had to do that in the Navy. I didn't get airborne in my F-18 off the Abraham Lincoln and go, all right, I'm, uh, I'm over Iraq. What's going on? Talk to me. That just doesn't happen, folks. Okay? So I'm going to teach you uh, all this stuff. Okay? She, she is a sir. Robert, I like the way you think. Seven-step trade plan. You have a little camera on the top of your screen. You can take a screenshot of this or write it down if you like taking notes and writing stuff down. I'm going to go through this lightning fast. But this is an entire ethos or, or methodology uh, here at TGO, a trade plan. Here's what's funny, uh, whether it's speakers today or speakers you're listening to in the past or down the, or will listen to, how often do you hear the word as a read? Because uh, I've been on this end, folks. I've been on your end. Uh, you know, I was doing this before Al Gore invented the Internet. So I, I remember driving out to the airport Marriott one time and the guy saying, you need a trade plan. All right. So I'm like, hey, yo. Uh, no questions. I'm like, do you have a trade plan you can give us? Okay, so moving on, we're not going to – okay, got it. I can't wait to start my own company someday, and I did. Seven-step trade plan. Here we go. Step one is to determine your strategic mindset, and I'll show you, you know, basically it's, it's four. You can be four things, bullish, bearish. You can think the market's going to be volatile, or you think the market's neutral. It's going to chop. And then you can have variations of it. I am cautiously bullish. I am extremely bearish. I'm moderately neutral. So you can have variations on it. But start with step one, folks. What are you? I'll ask people, when they ask me, like, oh, everybody tells me to have a trade plan. I, you know, I don't know one or have one. I'm like, okay. And I'll talk to them about TGO and give them a free copy of mine. And then I'll say, hey, what's your strategic mindset right now, man? What's your... Where are we going? What's your win the war in Iraq feeling right now? Uh, I don't know. I just put on a trade on Apple the other day. Uh, all right, that's not going to work. Step two, now we identify the target. Once we know our strategic mindset, I'm cautiously bullish, which I am right now, uh, and keep that in mind as we go forward through this trade plan. 
Identify the target. The target's the ETF, the stock, the index that we're going to trade. Okay, that's our target. Step three, and if you're clubbing in the Bahamas right now mentally, wake up. This is the most important part of my trade plan. Develop commit criteria. Literally, this came from fighter aviation. If I'm a flight lead and I have three F-18s on my wing over Iraq, and there's bad guys 80 miles away, well, guess what? That really doesn't hit my commit criteria. I'm not going to point my nose downrange and you know, go tangle it up. They're just kind of drilling holes in the sky, and I don't have any gas nearby. Now the AWACS, the radar plane, says, Wiz, those MiGs 80 miles away have now pointed at you. They're accelerating and climbing in altitude. That meets my commit criteria. And by the way, AWACS, get, a, get us some gas, a tanker. Let's go. Here's what you need in a trade, folks. Ask yourself these two questions. Why am I committing capital in this trade? Why am I in it? There's your two questions. I'll bump into people after giving a speech. Oh, I invest too. You know, I have an Apple trade on. Oh, great. Why? What's your commit criteria? Um, I, I like Apple. Uh, oh, wait, hold on pulls out of pocket iPhone. I have an iPhone. All right, well, that's the dumbest two reasons I've ever heard, okay? You need to have three to five sentences that you can hit me right between the eyes with. It's, it's a sales pitch, folks. For, how many of you have done uh, sales that know the term elevator pitch? If we get on the elevator together on the 30th floor, by the time we reach the first floor and the, the door goes ding, I, I better look at you like, oh, my God, why am I not in that Apple trade? I challenge you, even if you don't check us out at TGO, please do me a favor tonight, tomorrow, after this webinar, whenever you can. Look at every position in your portfolio, point at it, and say go, and start talking. I guarantee you, 95% of you in this webinar can't. You will fumble around for about three to five minutes while you're in this trade. Here's the important thing about having commit criteria. If at any time, listen to me very closely, if at any time during the life of the trade, it changes, they change, get out. This is, where, this is where retail traders fail. Look at the top of my slide, folks. Discipline, risk management, superior execution. How many of you have, if you had commit criteria and all of a sudden Apple moves against you, you do the old, well, Apple doesn't hate me. Um, you know, I, I hope it's going to come back. It, it, it'll come back. Apple doesn't know who you are. It would steamroll over your house and your family. It doesn't care. Stocks don't care about you. So if your commit criteria change, the reason for being in this trade and putting your money on the table changes. Get out or adjust it. You know, adjust it or get out. This is critical, folks. When this stuff is written down, it helps because it forces you to look at it. Well, I wrote two weeks ago, underneath commit criteria on this trade, these four things, and three of them are no longer valid. But maybe the number one thing will help me out. You're done. Four, now that we have our commit criteria, why we're committing capital, what's the tactic we're going to employ? If you learn nothing else from me today during my time, you will learn this. There is no such thing as an option strategy. All right, now you really lost me, Wiz, whatever your name is. Yeah, I love iron condors. It's a great strategy. You're wrong. A strategy is saving for college, managing risk, short-term income generation, buying a boat in six months, going to Aspen in the winter. Those are strategies. Those are win the war in Iraq, defeat ISIS. Tactics. In iron condor, cash secured puts, bull put spreads, uh, long call diagonals, those support a strategy. So next time you're in one of these presentations and a guy or a gal lays on the, the best option strategy, just sit there and my skin crawls when I hear it. Uh, tactical employment. How are we going to employ this trade? Wiz, it's an iron condor. I got a bear uh, call spread, bull put spread. It's this wide. Here's how you know wide the strikes are. Quack, quack, quack. That's how we're going to employ the trade. Now, six and seven are very important steps as well. Number six, mid-course guidance. I never dropped a bomb in anger uh, or fired a, a, a trade downrange with real capital and, and put my hands over my eyes and go, man, I hope, that, I hope that hits the target or I hope that trade finishes you know, where it's supposed to. 
hoping a strategy, guys. So we put mid-course guidance in there going, hey, if the stock starts moving against me, I'm going to, or the ETF, I'm going to adjust the trade by doing this. Or if it starts going up in value, I'm going to maybe take some profits or whatever. Map all of that out now so you don't have to think about it in the fog of trading. Just like in war, we call it the fog of war, there's a lot going on. Well, guess what? Even in the fog of war, you can fall back on what your plan is. That's why we plan. It's something to deviate from when the bullets start flying. Same thing in trading. And finally, folks, we identify our exit points. When do we identify them? Before we ever squeeze the trigger on the trade. I know when I'm going to get out of a trade for max profit or min loss before it even gets filled. Why? So I'm not emotional about it. People are like, oh, Wiz, I'm in this alphabet, you know, uh, bull call spread, and it's up 192%. I'm like, yeah, get out. Or I'll ask, when are you getting out? And people look at me like I'm an idiot. I'm the idiot. What do you mean, when am I getting out? I, I, I still think it's going to make more money. Well, pigs get slaughtered. When are you going to get, get out? 300%? 400%? 1,000%? You think it's going to – and then people, the light bulb starts to go on. Okay. So, sorry I had to blow through that really quick. That's uber fast, uh, but I want to stay on, uh, you know, stay on timeline. Yeah, Robert, I'm sure Apple loves you. Um, real quick about this acronym, to fear 2016. Write down the uh, each vertical that I tell you about. I'm not, I can't, for this, just for the sake of time, drill into each one of these. Uh, T, terrorism. Unless you've li been living under a rock, it's here. Uh, Marcus Luttrell from Loans. I know Marcus. He and I, I I've met him on the speaking circuit. I, I never met him in the Navy, obviously. Uh, everybody know Marcus Luttrell? He spoke at the Republican convention last night. He's the guy that wrote the book Lone Survivor, and also, obviously, the movie uh, Lone Survivor is about him. Um, he said it last night, hey, terrorism, it, it ain't over there. It's here. He's like, at least George Bush, for all his faults, said, let's kill him over there. And then, of course, Barack Obama and everybody gives them God, wars and overseas. Well, great. Now they're about two hours up the road from me in Orlando going into gay bars and mowing down half the place. Or they're technically going after cops. T is terrorism. Here's what's scary about this, though, folks, this T. I've been wrong about this year to date. I'll be the first one to admit I'm, when I'm wrong on things. The market's kind of shrugging it off. You know what? That, 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 that's good. I mean, some of you might sit there and go, well, Wiz, that's a good thing. The markets are shrugging off terrorists. That's what Obama would say. You know what a military guy like me says, or somebody with a brain, more importantly? Um, you know what that makes a terrorist do? I know terrorists. I've studied their intelligence. I've vaporized a couple. That makes them want to do bigger and more terror things. Keep that in your scan. Just because the markets aren't reacting to this, there's a big one coming, folks. We can talk about it over a beer. I'm not going to waste time. I know there's a big one coming, and I'm going to say uh, two words. Chemical, wait, three. Chemical or biological. You want to talk about terror? Throw some biological stuff in there. Oh, oil. Beginning of the year, two months, this market was driven around by oil. Uh, it did it the year before, too. And and this year, CNBC, again, proved like last year, they only uh, bring idiots on to speak. Just about to a man and woman, I, everybody at the beginning of the year was, oh, low gas, low oil, best thing that ever happened. It'll add a half a point, maybe two five, uh, 25 bips to the GDP. They were all completely wrong. I've, been to Mid I've landed Midland, Texas, folks, hopped in a pickup truck, literally, and driven 150 miles and been on a rig. I've done consulting in the oil industry. That's not what happens. And one of the few jobs in the United States where you can make six figures with just a high school diploma is what? Is on a rig, man, or off the coast. Uh, a roughneck, they call it. So guess what? When Schlumberger clips 30,000 of those guys and Midland, the town essentially turns into a ghost town, Houston, uh, Nebra uh, yeah, Nebraska, uh, Baton Rouge, uh, New Orleans, you know, the diners that support these guys, the, the realtors that, that work the housing, it's a... Your little $25 every other week savings in gas, quote unquote, doesn't do shit for the economy. How many of you look at the pump first of all and go, wow, I saved uh, 12 bucks over the last time I filled up? And then you take, you run inside as fast as you can 
talk to Apu in the Quickie Mart and say, Apu hooked me up with $12 worth of beef jerky and five-hour energy drinks. You don't. So that money doesn't go back into the economy anyway. F is the Fed. Obviously, with the quote-unquote strong jobs report, and you can, you can be damn sure there's going to be a strong one before the election, <laughs> Mr. Obama, um, the Fed might raise interest rates this year. When interest rates are high, stocks will die. Interest rates are low, stocks will grow. We've been in a near zero interest rate environment for, I don't even remember how long. It's been forever. That's what it feels like. What about the Fed? Is the Fed going to be the one that causes this market to roll over? I say no. E is Europe. My God, from Nice uh, to what's going on in Turkey to Mario Draghi saying I'm going to print as much as necessary and buy bonds to do some QE to Brexit. At TGO, the week of the Brexit, we made eight grand going into the vote, and we made three the next day on a hedge. And I, I'm like, oh my God, what you know? What if everybody's wrong? I'm ta first of all, I'm taking all these profits before the actual vote. I didn't think the market was going to ramp up this great. We had three weekly options trades on in two different portfolios, all in the S&P 500. Everybody remembers the run-up going into the Brexit. We got out. But what did I have on Friday? That expired Friday. A VXX double vertical, which I'm going to show you here in a couple minutes. And that thing, when the market <laughs> imploded Friday, everybody at TGO was like, how did you – a little bit of skill, a little bit of luck. Um, so Europe, A is Asia. I just rattled off Japan and China. China came out with GDP numbers last week that were okay. They were in line, most likely a lie. Hell, I don't even believe what our own government numbers are. But China's numbers are always a little – they're never going to have a Bear Stearns or Lehman Brothers moment. How do you know, Wiz? Well, they might, but you're never going to know about it. That's what the Chinese uh, economy and market is all about, not really being straightforward with you or letting you know how bad it is. So I am very, very long-term bullish on China via the FXI, Foxtrot X-Ray India, uh, because they're our banker, literally. They own it, you know. One day the doorbell could ring and it's IRS agent going, how many people live here? Five? You all owe 125 grand uh, to the U.S. government for our – got to repay China. Don't laugh. R, finally, Russia. Now, I'll be real – let me be blunt. A couple of these things, folks, I don't, I don't like to be bullish on. I don't like to be bullish on China. I was trained to shoot down – you know, Chinese uh, fighter jets and train. I, I flew their tactics as a bad guy. Russia. Most of my career in the Navy was still kind of Russia oriented. The jets that I flew were supposed to be MiG 29s, Russian MiG 29s. I wrote uh, you know, a Cyrillic name tag with Russian wings on my on my flight suit. So I have two suits at Top Gun Options: a flight suit and a business suit. The business suit is Gordon Gecko. Love Gordon Gecko. I'm a greedy guy. Greed is good. I'm going to make money off the stupidity of others. I will tell you that while I don't like being bullish on Russia, you got to be bullish on a guy that's doing whatever the hell he wants. Crimea? Yeah, there's some Russians in there. We're a little bit uh, worried about it. We're invading a sovereign country. What are you going to do about it, Europe? NATO? We did nothing. He invaded the rest of eastern Ukraine. What did we do? Well, Obama said, stop or I'll say stop again, and he wagged his finger. And then they shot down an airliner full of ch children, men, women, just in, into the – imagine flying along at 38,000 feet, folks, and all of a sudden in your seat, falling. Can you imagine a, a worse death? So Putin, like the, the Chinese, aren't going to let anything bad happen. He's going to win no matter what. Okay. Uh, Ram. Can you make this guy stop? He is hurting his business if he doesn't realize. Ram, I really don't care uh, what you believe. I know I'm not hurting my business. ton of customers at TGO, and most of them uh, agree with what I do. If you don't, at least listen to the trade I'm going to uh, provide to give you some protection. I, but I, I appreciate your, your comments there, and I love dissent and uh, no, uh, no, no issues, man. I appreciate your, uh, your comment there. I know I'm not hurting my business. Trust me. What, what is somebody going to – Rom, are you going to come firebomb it? <laughs> I doubt it. Um, Real quick brief, and then I'm giving you the trade. 
Well, let's just get. I don't have time for the strategic brief. Uh, we got a lot going on. Uh, United Kingdom. We talked about uh, China. This is all from my webinar from today, our, our live trade brief today. This is our. This is the portfolio that. Um, this is the primary live trade brief portfolio. How are we doing here to date? So, uh, this portfolio is up about ninety-three thousand dollars, folks, on um, about a hundred and eighty grand. That's a hell of it being being deployed in capital. That's a hell of a return. So, Rom, if you don't think my business is doing well, my investors do. Um, we talked about the Fed. The financials are crushing it, folks. The financials, write this down. Goldman, uh, J.P. Morgan, and Morgan Stanley. Goldman's the gold, ha, ha, ha. Goldman's the gold medal winner in the financial space. J.P. Morgan's a silver medalist, and depending on earnings tonight, I, Morgan Stanley's kind of third. Right? Your Bank of America's and your city groups, uh, eh, you know, also RANs. Uh, but Wells Fargo's kind of a mom and pop bank. Right, you know, mortgages and all those type of things. They're kind of a canary in the coal mine. Them slipping right now isn't good. Uh, but a couple things before. Let me get the trade on. We shouldn't be at all-time highs. Larry Fink. Anybody know who Larry Fink is? He he's at BlackRock. BlackRock isn't some Boy Scout troop. Uh, I mean, the other day, uh, who was it? Um, Jeffrey Gunlock from uh, Double Line in LA, a $90 billion hedge fund, a little bigger than mine, uh, and Bill Gross from PIMCO. Everybody knows Bill Gross. Every quote-unquote smart money right now is saying we shouldn't be up here, and they're either getting short or getting out. So what do we do as retail traders, or you guys do? Do, do, we, do we sit here and just say, well, okay. So here's let's just do a quick review. There's the implosion through the 50-day, 200-day in the blink of an eye because of Brexit. And here's the snapback in the blink of an eye. I missed this by about a day. I, when, before we imploded, I said, we won't even be saying the word Brexit in a week. We'll have forgotten about it. CNBC, everybody's 30-second you know, focused. I was off by about two days. People forgot about it in about four days. We chopped a little bit over the 50-day, uh, and then we went on this... I don't know what it is, but who cares? This, folks, first of all, was a lot of foreign money. After this right here, a lot of people around the world said, where is the best house in this horrific neighborhood? It's the United States, folks. For all my bemoaning of currently what's going on in the U.S., hell, man, USA, USA, love it. Taking a little bit of a break. Now, I don't think we're going to implode back to the 50-day. I don't think we're going to have a rip your face off rally that's just going to continue straight up. I'm a little uncertain. Here's my portfolio right here, like I told you about. I got Apple, AIG, uh, Japan, Brazil, China, Gold, Morgan Stanley, Nike, Russia, uh, Energy, Financials, uh, XLK is Technology, and Consumer Discretionary. Here's what I. Here's the one thing that I am failing at as a portfolio manager right now. There is no protection on right here. What happens if we decide to implode? Write this sentence down. When vol is cheap, you buy it. When it's expensive, you sell it. Right now, vol is incredible. Look at the uh, going into the Brexit. It was up, this is the VXX, at 13. We're down 11.50. Folks, I'm looking out the window right now in Fort Lauderdale at the beach. It's beautiful. Now's when you buy hurricane insurance. You don't buy hurricane insurance when I look up at the TV and I see Channel 5 News Lady going, there's a tropical depression over the Bahamas. It's too late. Well, no, it's not too late. You can still buy it. It'll cost you quadruple. So why don't we get long vol right now? And I'm going to put a, a trade on that's called a bullish double vertical. If you don't know what this trade is, so, some – People call it a risk reverse, blah, blah, blah. I call it a bullish double vertical because that's what it is. It's going to be two spreads on top of each other. Look at this. With the same strategic mindset. In this case, I'm bullish. Uh, let me just throw some since I've been on the air here. It's, the prices have moved around. So I just want to make sure. I'll, I'll explain it in a second, folks. Uh, I think we can do a buck 25. 
this is a bull put spread with a bull call spread. A bull put spread is a credit spread, and I took some of that credit, and I turned around and bought a bull call spread. Okay, that's a little bit better. We can do, I guess we could do 150. One more second. Let me give you the buck 50 uh, analyze. All right, let me open up here. Here we go. I'm going to sell 150. Why 150? I'll tell you in one minute. Of the 11 and a half puts. What if you're wrong, Wiz, and Jesus, Muhammad, and Ganesh come back to life, and Buddha, and Baal implodes and goes to zero? Well, I'm going to buy 150 of the 11 puts. That's my, that's my tourniquet to the downside. This is a, a bull put spread. is also called what? A credit spread. I'm bringing in a little bit of coin to do this, so guess what? I'm going to turn around and use that coin and buy, because I'm very, very I, I, I'm cautious. I told you I was cautiously bullish. If the market starts to roll over here, it might do it fast, and we might see a pop in ball. So why don't I buy a bull call spread with these with the credit here? Buying the 12 and a half, 13 bull call spread. Why 150 contracts? Here's why. Look at Mr. Sadface. Max potential loss, 4,500 bucks. That's based on 150 contracts. I have what I call SOPs at Topkin Options, Standard Operating Procedures. I don't want to risk more than five grand on any one trade in this model portfolio. That's 5%. It's a $100,000 model portfolio. I don't want to risk more than five grand. Why? That's me. Whiz, I'm, I don't want to risk more than grand. Great. Then lower your contracts. Trade 30 contracts. I, I don't know. I can't give you financial advice. But I am basing my max loss on my rules of engagement. Now we can look at Mr. Happy. 10.5, 10,500 bucks. Well, Wiz, these are kind of low pro uh, probabilities. Yeah, exactly, because they're showing us the best and worst case scenario. V VXX would have to pop all the way above 13, or it would have to implode all the way below 11. I don't think either one of those are going to happen. Somewhere in the, in the middle is the happy medium. But look at the probability for break even, 51%. Okay, well that one's definitely a lot better. So uh, as long as we stay above 1130, folks, this trade makes some sort of money. Here's the best part, and then I'll take I'll take a couple of your questions here. You ready for this? This should put a huge smile on your face. A credit of three grand. I'm pausing for effect so you listen to that. Wiz, let me get this straight. I'm sitting in my kitchen filling out my USAA auto home and life check for the for the month and somebody just came in and sat down and said, We're gonna we're gonna take care of that. Yeah, I am. I am bringing in a credit of three grand to hedge between now and August expiration against a pop in volatility. Doesn't this trade Makes sense. This trade, I told you, crushed it with the Brexit. Obviously, the I mean, the Brexit huge swing in volatility. I get it, but anybody, if you don't follow volatility, folks, you should. That should be one of the instruments in your cockpit. The VIX can move in the blink of an eye, folks. 15, 20, 25 percent. Okay. So again, this is called a bullish double vertical. It brings in three grand, and it's going to do what? It's going to keep me. It's going to keep me – I'm actually saving this because I want to take a look at this and send it out to my subscribers. Um, I want to save it below. Uh, so it's saved. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send out an alert after I get done with you guys to my subscribers because guess what? I don't have any – I don't have an ejection seat in my portfolio. The last one expired a week or two ago. It is always, always, always – I never went flying over Iraq. I never went down to maintenance control, folks, and the chief said, hey, Lieutenant Buckley, you have aircraft 200, okay? It doesn't have an ejection seat. You still want to take it? That doesn't happen. Here's where you need to go, folks, and then I'll, I'll take some questions. If you're interested in what we do here at Top Gun Options, uh, you can head to go.topgunoptions.com slash get OWS. Okay, and I think Renee will throw that in the chat box uh, for me as I uh, as I wrap up here. Um, you can either do uh, it's called Options Weapon School. 
you'll see on this page what you get. Access to all the live trade briefs that I do, including weekly options. We have a great weekly options trade on this week. Uh, and eight weeks of academic training that I just started last week. So if you get on board now, you can watch the replay, obviously, from last week. It's on the member page. But you can see uh, tomorrow night we do covered calls and cash secured puts, bullish spreads, bearish spreads, double verticals, diagonals, iron condors, you name it. Get access to all our, uh, our manuals, everything. So that's options weapon school. If you want to trade weekly options, it's just a little bit more. So options weapon school is all the academics and live trading and everything. Options weapon school with weekly options is Duh, obviously options web to school with weekly options. I don't think I needed to say that. Um, if you have any uh, questions, concerns, uh, oh, by the way, smart remarks, I'll take those too. I uh, don't mind any of those. I have a thick skin. Uh, you can call Annie Santos. She's our uh, Director of Client Relations at 754-300-1084. Okay, that's our, uh, uh, our or, or you can email support at topkinoptions.com.